Amongst the horrors of the Middle Ages, there is perhaps no greater champion for the dangers of ignorance than the witch hunts. Throughout their course, an estimated 35 to 100,000 souls were put to death. Artistic renditions of the rituals believed to be performed by those accused of witchcraft abound. Monstrous scenes from artists like Hans Bolden, Francesco Goya, and Giuseppe di Ribera all provide a window into the unholy arts many believed to be practiced. But to truly see beyond the looking glass, you need go no further than Salvatore Rosa's gothic interpretation of witches at their incantations. Rosa's depiction of the rituals of the witches churns the stomach. In one corner, a skeleton rises from the dead. Its bony hand clutters at a pen as it scrawls its signature onto a document, aided by a crone and her apprentice. A naked witch balances a voodoo doll in front of a mirror. An old hag prepares a potion with the remains of some offal. A knight is forced to sacrifice a rabbit in order to enact a spell. A freshly dismembered heart finds itself skewered onto the end of a sword. A baby, held up in offer to some malignant demon born of bone and horror. And at the center, a hanged man, his neck broken and tubescent under the weight of his own sin. His corpse tended to by a witch that cuts his toenails for some sinister brew, while her sister holds a pitcher of smoking herbs. This striking imagery is reflected in many other works by the great painter. Motifs including the emaciated figures of demons and sacrifice appear regularly. Nakedness, a sign of the women's disregard for chastity, and a symbol of their depraved spirit in service to the devil. Cannibalism, a perversion of the body in pursuit of otherworldly power. A darkened sky, for evil must shun the light. The dichotomy of beauty and beast for the allure of the forbidden unknown. The question is though, why? Why would the world in these paintings express such horror? when the crimes committed by the real women could never eclipse the most threadbare of the painting's injunctions. Scholarly belief suggests that the paintings were, in fact, a critique not of the women themselves, but of the society that condemned them. The acts of depravity contained within the frame an accusation one that challenged those hell-bent on destruction to separate fact from fiction. Regardless of Rose's intentions, the paintings themselves had little effect, if any, in dissuading the masses from their folly. The art survives as a relic of a bygone era, where fear and distrust drew women screaming into the streets, condemned to suffer not for their crimes, but for that of their neighbors.